Rock Radio, the future of radio. 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 Welcome to the Kim Baker Show, the amazing connection between horses, animals, and humans. And so I just wanted to share with everyone again, you know, I just have a great passion around horses, especially in all animals. And really the show is about is about that and how they've helped me through my life. And I, I just love learning new things and I love the animals and just sharing my information and what I get. And that's really what this show is about. So we'll get started with our medicine cards and... We're going to shuffle. Cammie, do you know the medicine cards? I do. I love okay. the medicine cards. And we have Cammie Gildner in studio with us today. She is my special guest. So this is my goofy shuffling. <laughs> and I'm going to have you pick. All right. Go with that one. Okay. So you pulled I got the ant. ant. Oh. Nice. Do you remember what ant is? I don't remember what ant is. I don't either. Something about... No, that's not it. What is it? <laughs> ant is patience. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about... We were about. just talking about that. <laughs> I was telling Cammy, I'm not the most patient person in the world. So, uh, let's see here. I'm going to... Um, Let's see, if you have ant, I'm not going to read the whole thing anymore. I'm just going to highlight. If you have ant medicine, you eat slowly and deliberately and are content in knowing that what is yours will come to you. This knowing is good medicine. It shows a trust in the universe to provide. If ant meandered into your spread today, it is time to show a little trust and patience in some life situation. You may have forgotten that you will always receive that which you need at the time you need it most. If you if it is not on the horizon or just around the next ant hill, you may need to use some strategy. How can you put to use your power of creation until it arrives? Whatever it means to you at this time. Ant is working for the good of the whole, are you? If you are, be assured that the whole wants the same goodness for you and that it will be provided. So that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> it was the synchronicity of that card. Just this beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. And that gosh, I should read that every day. <laughs> okay, so let's get to Cammy. Hello, Kim. <laughs> How are you today, Kim? I'm great. I'm great. And you know that energy work that you talk about was some of the very first work that I did that started my own personal journey out of that corporate world. Oh, really? It was. It was. It was uh um, just some classes that I took that kind of started opening up my mind to different possibilities in different ways. Oh. So those, those, I, I highly recommend your energy classes oh, to, thank you. to other people um, to, you know, to get people experiencing that, that energy work. Yeah, the energy, I think, um, you know, just, uh, well, energy is neither created nor destroyed and it just exists, you know, in the universe and we're energetic, everything else is energetic. So just understanding that a little bit more. And I think it, like you said, it just opens up opportunities and, and possibilities for, for many different things. And just becoming aware of, of how those energies intermingle certainly, yes. um, is, is, is a way to, to open up and experience, um, new awareness. Awareness is key, definitely. Mm -hmm. So Cammy is the founder of, how do you pronounce it, Syzygy? Syzygy. Syzygy? Yes, yeah, so Syzygy is actually a word. It means when there's three celestial bodies in alignment. Um, so if you look it up in the dictionary, it is a word that you can, you can find. And uh, um, I started Syzygy three years ago. It's a coaching and, con and leadership consulting company. Okay. And I integrate horses into my work, so it's it's fantastic. Wonderful. So tell us, how did you get from where you were to where you are today? Okay, uh, great story. Um, I was um, in the corporate world for 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. I was a VP of marketing, living a very crazy, busy life. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my very first gifts in that year of 2008 was that uh, I got laid off. <laughs> And it was it was a marvelous gift because I, I would not have made the transition that I made into doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And, I understand. Right. And so um, second gift of that year was it was 2008 and there was no other VP of marketing jobs to be found. Right. And so 
I had to take a little time and slow down and really learn to um, just tap back into who I was as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, And there was a lot of things that happened that year. We were talking about synchronicity and how how things happen for a reason and the timing that they do happen. And so not only I got laid off and a month later, my father passed away. And when my father passed away, it made me stop and really start connecting back into values that he taught me, lessons that he taught me as a young girl. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize that I had let go of some of those really key and important lessons. And in doing that, um, I was doing a lot of self-exploration. I was working with coaches. I was taking time just to go on hikes and slow down and hang out in the barn in the mornings and watch the swallows or, you know, just really slowing down, Mm -hmm. which was something I hadn't done for a really long time. Right. And um, as as I did that, I started just reconnecting back to these pieces of me that I'd let go in that busy, crazy corporate life that I had lived. And, um, but it was, it was, it was a bit of a frustrating journey still. It was, you know, right. you're still, you're trying to figure out where you're supposed to fit and mm-hmm. what's your right path that you're supposed to be on. And there was actually a moment, um, it was, a, it was a, a November morning where I spoke with a coach on the phone for about an hour and a half and um, it was pretty emotional that day. And at the end of that, that call, I said, you know, I don't know why I'm not finding, I'm not fitting right. where I'm supposed to go. She says, you know, what you should do today is really just go out and spend some time with your horses and just stop and just breathe in their breath. And I thought, well, you know, I've, I've always been a horse person. That sounds like an intriguing, interesting thing to do. Right. And um, so I did. It had snowed about 18 inches of snow that day. Oh, wow. And I, I trudged through the snow and got to the barn. And my paint mare, Sugary, was standing at the gate waiting to um, be there. I mean, she was, she was clearly engaged with me. I uh-huh. got there. And as I walked up to her and started to breathe in her breath through her very frosty nose, right. with, you know, it was you know she had icicles on her on her, her whiskers. On, her, on her whiskers, and there was frost in the air, and we uh-huh. kind of breathed back and forth, and we stood there for the longest time, and you know, thinking of the energy space that encompasses you right. with the horses, that their energy can totally surround us and. Mm-hmm. And, and lift us, and that's what it did to me that day. It, it, it lifted me, but it also took all the pieces of my puzzle that I had not been able to put together, and all of a sudden they came together for me. I knew what I was supposed to be doing, where oh, wow. I was supposed to be going. It was very, a very, very specific moment where it was like, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. And that's wonderful. That's how Syzygy started. Oh, wow. Exactly. And so it was from that very moment, um, I knew that um, I wanted to go into the coaching world. I knew I wanted to integrate horses into my coaching work. And um, as, a, as a young girl, you know, I'd always known that um, I could go get on my horse and ride all day long, and somehow the answers came to me. Right. Um, that was, a, an, a, you know, a great moment of that happening. And I want to be able to give that back to other people. Absolutely. Wow. That's a beautiful story. Um, so you, you mentioned that you had horses pretty much since you were a young girl. So what, what was, what was growing up with horses like? Uh, it was fantastic. I, I was very fortunate. I had, you know, my, my father put me up on the back of a horse from the time I was a, a little baby. And as I was three years old, I could ride out. My mom would let me ride around the neighborhood with the, the neighborhood kids. So it was, it was a form of freedom. It was, um, a form of probably being in nature uh-huh. that took me to a deeper level. And I think I've always had this deep, deep connection to horses. And the more that I've um, gone down this path in the last several years, moving into the equine guided world of of working with the horses, um, I just keep tapping into that in a deeper and deeper level. And, and, and knowing that there's so much that the horses can teach us, so much um, wisdom that they can bring to us if we just stop and listen. Right. Um, that's the, the, the gift and the beauty of what the horses bring to me. 
Absolutely, and I, I have um, had that advice as well. That um, and it's been called Wu Wei, mm-hmm. and basically it's that. It's you. It's the art of doing nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, and and we so don't do that in our society. We don't. We don't do it enough. So we're going to take a quick break. Everyone stay tuned. You're listening to The Kim Baker Show, uh, and we'll be right back. Well, it's Saturday night. You're all dressed up in blue. I've been watching you a while. Maybe Castle Rock Radio, the future of radio. 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 Welcome back to the Kim Baker Show, the amazing connection between horses, animals, and humans. And so we're talking with Cammie, and Cammie shared a lovely story about how she got into the work that she's doing today, and part of that was uh, the lessons that she had learned from her father. And if, um, as you know, my grandmother passed away a couple weeks ago, and a good friend of mine told me that uh, when the way that you can honor someone's legacy is by doing the things that they taught you, being the things that they taught you. So, Cami, are you willing to share with us the lessons? Because you had brought it up about the lessons that you're, you had forgotten about the lessons that your dad had taught you. So what? Oh, absolutely. Um, my father taught me a lot about nature. Um, so I, I did a lot of hiking with him um, as, as a young girl. And um, I would go out and, and just be out in nature with him. I would um, spend time with him on horses. And so I think what a lot of what I learned from him was... Um, that you know you're really closest to god when you're out in nature Mm. and um and 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 the to be to honor your family members and the you know the love of a a strong family and um he also taught me just about about the value of hard work and Mm -hmm. um you know just just growing as a person and, and 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 i think i can tie a lot of my success in my life back to what my father taught me and so, um, to me, those were just lessons that kind of took me back up into, boy, I've, I've not been um, tapped into the, the horse world. I've not been t- tapped out into nature and really listening and watching the birds and thinking, what right. does that mean? What's, you know, the birds coming into our, our world and our realm right now at this very given moment, what does it mean? Mm-hmm. And... Um, so I, I needed to, to step back and, and do that. Uh, yeah, I can see, you know, looking back, uh, well, I know, you know, you don't have to be in corporate to just, you know, you get busy mm-hmm. and you're just, I have this to do and this to do and this appointment, this errand to run, and you just are going, 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 and basically you're not stopping, cliche, to smell the roses, you know? Um, so I, I I can see that where you just... Even if you just take a moment, and I remember um, for one of the advice, pieces of advice that I got for our wedding day mm-hmm. back in 2000 was take one moment to stop, take a nice deep breath, and just absorb it all in because it goes so fast. Right. And you probably experienced that with your... I just got married this month, and exactly, and I when we took that moment, and I, I value that moment... Um, and I will always value that moment. It was it was a moment that we could really look into each other's eyes and be there and and share it and say, you know, this is this is we this is all about us. So that's it awesome. was a very special time. That's awesome. And that's that's the kind of lesson that I think I learned from my father. Going back to that, you know, what do, how do you do things differently? How do you get out of that pace of of you're on the treadmill of going going going? I was right. working eighty hour a week, you know, and traveling. Um, probably about 75% of the time. And wow. it was, I, I wasn't, um, I lost touch with friends. I'd lost touch with family. And it was all these little lessons of of slow down and reconnect. And it's funny because when I think about um, my father, he was kind of a rough and tough cowboy. And um, I, you know, I, I, I work in a world today that, that's, um, you know, it, there's elements of what I do today that is, okay, 
are, are the horses talking to us? Well, they're talking to us. They're telling us. They're reflecting back to us in some way right. and helping us learn our lessons. He might have raised an eyebrow in, in his rough and tough cowboy days. Said, what are you doing with horses? Um, <laughs> But I uh, I feel his presence so strongly in the work that I do and have from the day that I started um, going through the training that I w- needed to go through to become a e- certified equine guided educator. He's been part of that that journey with me, and it it's kept reinforcing back to me that this is the path you're supposed to be on. And so I wouldn't have even tapped into that awareness of knowing that I was getting those messages from him in some sort of a way. Um, had I not, you know, gone back to those very basic foundations right. that he taught me early on. Right. That makes sense. So, and the horses, that's what, that's what the horses give us. Oh, it's, it's such what, a gift. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we get into the, you know, you get out with the horses and you slow down to their pace of, of life that they live and their awareness levels that they have and, and their ability to really reflect back the, um, the emotions and the feelings of a, of a person sitting there um, or engaging with the horses, that um, that's truly a gift that they offer to us. Absolutely. And we've talked about that a lot on this show, just, you know, their level of awareness, how they walk through the world, the reflection mm-hmm. um, that they can give mm-hmm. on the person that they're working with, and just how you end up learning more about yourself. And so you have taken this and you've weaved it all together. So tell us a little bit about what it is exactly that you do and the people that, that, that you work with. I mean, you shared your story about getting laid off. I've shared my story about getting laid off and we're finding our paths. And that's really, you know, that's where you, you help people is finding their passion, re, you know, redefining and reawakening their passion and then moving forward with it. Absolutely. I, I, I really, my my mission is really to work with people who are wanting to figure out their next chapter in their life. They're either transitioning or they're like, I've been doing this for a really long time and I want to do something differently. I don't know what that is. Help me reconnect back to my passions, to my values, to my strengths, who I am at the very heart of my essence. Mm-hmm. And that's the piece that I relish working with people in. Um, I help people... Um, with the horses, the horses become part of that journey. They, they, we get into a lot of questions and discussions and discovery, and um, the horses are always part of a key part of that, helping someone dis- determine what's the right path that they should be on. And how do the horses for for those that you know maybe a little afraid, mm-hmm. you know, of mm-hmm. just. Uh, the sheer size of a horse. So how, how, how does that play out? What does that look like? I spend a lot of time in my work in the reflective, um, just going up and standing next to a horse and pay attention to how they're breathing or pay attention to what, what do you notice? Do you notice the color of their hair? Do you notice the color of their eyes or the, the way that they're breathing? And letting people kind of find that quiet space, whether it's across the fence line Mm -hmm. or whether it's right close to them. Okay. And letting each person individually move down that path of experiencing the horses at a pace that they're comfortable in. Um, I've I've definitely had people come into my workshops and and my coaching programs that are a little bit fearful of a horse. Mm -hmm. I've never had anybody leave fearful of a horse. (laughs) That's great. Um, I I have them. It's the horse. The horses tend to um, just keep opening up that path of of discovery for them, and 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 in the in experiencing the horses, um, you know, and and I work with people who have long time experiences with horses and people who have ne- had no experience with horses. So every person is, you know, as they come in is on their own journey. Right. And, um, it, it unfolds for them in the way that it's supposed to unfold. That's great. That's great. Um, I wanted to mention too, like, <laughs> I get so busy talking and, and wanting to learn about this. I forget to say that, you know what, we have the chat up. If you have questions, please let us know. You're welcome to call us in the studio at 888 Three two one seven two three four. That number again is eight 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 
321-7234. Please feel free to let, you know, Cammy or I know if you have any questions, you know, about this work. This work is fascinating. And perhaps you're at home um, thinking, mm, you know, I, I know that I want to do something different or you want to make that transition. And so if you have questions, you know, Cammy would be happy to to, you know, get you started a little bit or, Absolutely. or, you know, maybe it's just that fear of wanting to take the next step. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned, everyone. You're listening to The Kim Baker Show. Welcome back to the Kim Baker Show, the amazing connection between horses, animals, and humans. And I just wanted to share, um, we had a chat comment in regards to what we were talking about and working with the horses that, you know, Cammy was saying that some people uh, come in with a little bit of a fear, um, but they don't leave with a fear of horses. And the feedback was, good to know that people can calm their fears of horses. They can be scary due to their size, absolutely. Um, whether it's um, what we would deem in the horse world as a small horse or a big horse, horses are just big in general, and they can certainly be intimidating. And, and the gifts that the horses end up bringing um, tend to become the focus you know as, as people start to stop and slow down and and get out of that busy pace that they've arrived in and get into that pace of the horses what happens is that um, they start noticing you know what messages might be showing up for them as they start to explore their stories and their their passions and 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 what they want to manifest in their life and um, when they get to that place where the horses are telling that helping tell that story or let that story unfold um all of that other stuff all of the the fear Mm -hmm. or um it just it goes away and it's 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 more part of this whole journey of okay this is about me exploring and, and and uncovering what messages i have to learn that's great and so and i've been i haven't been to one of cammy's workshops yet um but i have experienced some other similar things Mm -hmm. and you know this is very personal work but it's in what we call a sacred container absolutely and so you feel very very safe and 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 most people do you know have that hump to get over of letting you know letting those fears go but man when those doors open it just flows and And, it's so nice and you know when it's um when the horse's messages come through it's generally so powerful you know it's 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 there's no there's no second guessing what that was about it was like you know and and it's never me interpreting what what the message is it's it's the individual saying you know i understand what that was all about yeah so it's it's really each person really letting their inner knowledge come out as the horses are there with them. That's great. Well, and, and Cammy's done a survey um, for people that are making transitions, and she has some some great feedback. So um, why don't you go ahead and share what what you found? Sure. I, I just went out. I, I had um, an interest in and really taken a mission on, as I mentioned earlier, on on helping people discover their next chapter in their life. And so I've gone out recently and, and interviewed um, over 100 women, um, professional women who are starting to think about their next chapter in life. And um, what was one of the very fascinating bits that have, has come back to me already off of this survey, we're about ready to close it out um, just this week, um, was that um, when, in thinking about the next chapter in life, mm-hmm. Seventy-one percent of the women who responded said that within the next three years they want to um, they want to start their man they want their next chapter to begin. Oh wow! So and and thirty-one percent are saying that within the next year they want their next chapter chapter to begin. So people are wow. ready for that transition now. Mm-hmm. They are they are starting to think about 
you know, where, how do I, how do I make this next step? Right. Um, what's, you know, and sometimes people know exactly where they want to go and, and um, they know what they need to do to get there. But more often than not, they're, they're not quite sure how to do it. They're, they're too busy. They're, they're moving at a pace that they don't, they're not even thinking about these questions, but they know inherently that they need to start making that change. Right. And I think that's one of, so the, the rate, the number of people that are saying that they want to make this change within the next year and then within the next three years um, is really telling, I think, in our society that, that people are ready for a change. They've been, they've been kind of holding out through this economy. They've been, um, they've been, you know, corporations are doing more with less and, Mm -hmm. you know, that pace, that pressure has been building and building. And um, so what's exciting for me is is the role that the horses can play in this transition and helping people find that next path and find that next journey absolutely i think that the reason i was giggling a little bit is i have a conspiracy theory but we won't get into that because that'll, that'll get too political um, <laughs> but i think that the horses you know they have helped us you know they've fought wars with us they've you know um basically uh, <clears throat> and for lack of a better term tamed the west with a civilization things like that but i think their shift now in helping us is to reconnect with who we are as humans oh absolutely and how and humans the way we're living right now is not the way humans are supposed to be living i would, I don't I would th- agree i would totally agree and i think that there's a that they are tapped into a realm that we're not tapped into. Yes, and we can we can get tapped into that realm, that oneness, one, that oneness of our universe, and we can you know we can look at our, our our world as a whole and understand how we impact one another. Uh, yes, and um, you know you think that of of how a herd of horses, how they you know they interact together and how they protect and they watch and they. It's 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 time for us to kind of take on that sort same sort of a framework right. within our world. Absolutely, and, and um, start to um, let them be our guides as we are moving down this this um, this healing path for our earth and ourselves. <clears throat> Absolutely. I agree completely. Um, I want to make one comment and then we have a question okay. on the chat and horses as a herd, you know, they, they're individuals, but as the herd, they become one and how they move is one for food and shelter and just basic survival. Absolutely. And I think that we as humans, you know, our basic survival is, is not what it was. It's, it's very artificial these days. Absolutely. And I think, you know, each, if if you examine that herd, they each bring a leadership role Yes. to the herd. And it may not be the lead mare or the lead stallion, but they have a leadership role. And um, we each, as as a human being on this earth, have a leadership role that we can play and contribute to how our earth shifts and changes and how we can make a difference. Definitely. I think um, this just brought up, because I, I love wolves, but wolves are the same way as mm-hmm. a pack. Mm-hmm. Each member of that pack has a role to play in the survival of the pack. And so our chat question is, how do you prevent falling back into what you know and are comfortable with? Ah, <laughs> and that's a great question because it's, it's, we get tests, I get tested every day, oh, you know? Yes. And, it's, and it's so funny, I can go back and I can say, oh, I'm being tested again. I, this, is, this is, and so you, you become aware of what's going on, you become aware of when you feel like you're on purpose and when you're on the right path, and then you start to when you get the little test, it becomes much more um, apparent that those tests are showing up for you, mm-hmm. especially when they start to show up consistently. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lesson that you're supposed to be learning, right? And um, so paying attention to um, the, the the synchronicity of things that are ha- that's happening in your world. Um, paying attention to when you're working in your place of purpose, um, it feels differently. Your body is your body feels like you can just accomplish anything, and um, the right people are showing up and coming mm-hmm. into your path and, and your world. Um, when you start coming into a lot of conflict, that's uh, it's a red flag, and it's like what what am I doing? What am I doing today? Or within you know this this frame 
framework that tells me that I'm on a different, that something's off here and right. I need to make these adjustments. So when you start feeling that conflict coming in and coming in, um, but it, it's, it's a practice. You have to take time to slow down, to smell the roses, as you were saying earlier. Be patient. Be patient. <laughs> look for the look for the ways that that can help you reconnect. Um, whether it's stopping and breathing your horse's breath, or whether it's um, you know whatever it is that that helps you reground yourself and doing it on a very consistent basis. And, and um, even for those that don't have a horse or have access to a horse, right? You know, if you've got a dog or a cat, or you don't have any animals, just you can watch the birds. Right. I, I'm I'm a big believer of watching the birds and sh- paying attention to when they show up. And I mean, I, whether it's the hawks, whether it's the hummingbirds, whether it's the barn sparrows, it's you know, there's there's it's all around us, and the messages can come to us in any form, um, in nature, and any form, and even w- kind of patterns that show up in our life. So it's it's just stopping and being aware. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Another comment is, it's so easy to just be comfortable with what you already know instead of listening to that inner voice that is pointing you in the different direction. Take a chance and be happy. Absolutely. I mean, we we are all, you know, quote, guilty of just, you know, being comfortable and staying in our comfort zone and and it takes a lot to branch out and you know overcome the fears because we all have fears about Absolutely. different you know different things and and just stepping I mean we're really stepping out and putting ourselves out there and so it's kind of like taking you know the whoopee off and <laughs> <laughs> well you know and, and it goes back to I mean I say that it was a gift when I got laid off in 2008 and it was a gift. I would not have made that shift. I was on that pace, and I was I was very content to kind of keep. And there was all those signs were showing up for me, mm-hmm. but I wasn't paying attention to them. And so, so the universe said to me, "Oh no, we're taking you off of this path because you've got something else to do." And so, when we get those hiccups and those bumps in our lives, there's generally something that we can learn from it if we just step back and say, "Okay, what was I supposed to learn here?" Right. And same with me, you know, I wasn't going to leave. Right. You know, it was, it was a great job, great pay, great benefits. I got to work from home five days a week. You know, it was, it was great, but you know, I got booted out the door. So it's like, okay, well now what do I do? Yeah. You were supposed to be doing something different. And that's, that's, that's the, the beauty of this life is, is, is if we just stop and let the, the path happen as opposed to, and it's not that we just sit back and don't do anything because it takes hard work right. to get on your right path and to to maintain it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so it's not to just say that it just always is easy, but you can tell the difference if you start to pay attention to what feels right and when am I on my purpose and when am I not on my purpose. And I think I think the key with the awareness piece is knowing is is that feeling that you're describing of knowing what's right. You just you know what you know. You just feel it in your bones and you know it to be true absolutely and absolutely. and so that's so you know getting out and and understanding that awareness and 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 the energy piece and stuff is really right. key to helping you make the transition so that you can see the flags and understand and 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 have all that information and know what to do with it absolutely and i, I call it in my in my um, retreats i call it peeling back the layers of the onion so it's like every time they're doing whether it's a um, an, a round pin experience with the horses, a shamanic journey, whether it's a medicine wheel, they're 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 discovering a little bit more deeply what they're supposed to know. What's that knowing piece that is deep inside of them? And um, you know, you've got to do the work to to, to understand where you're at mm-hmm. and and to know what you're supposed to be doing. But that's the gift that that exploration can bring. Definitely. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to The Kim Baker Show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Really, man, come on. Six o'clock news. Say somebody been shot. Somebody's been abused. Somebody blew up a building. Somebody stole a car. Somebody got away. Somebody didn't get too far. Yeah. Castle Rock Radio. The future of radio. Radio.
Welcome back to the Kim Baker Show, the amazing connection between horses, animals, and humans. And so we were talking about awareness and stepping outside your comfort zone. And we were talking early in the show about inspiration. And I use the medicine cards for the animals and what they can teach us in inspiration. I re- um, read you a little bit from Mark Nepo's book, and I post those. I post quotes every day from his book on my Facebook page. And Cami created um, Pony Ponderings cards, and she did that as a way to awaken her awareness. Absolutely. It was my way of stopping and kind of slowing down each morning and just tapping into what was I supposed to learn on that given day. And so that's how those cards were 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 birthed, if you will. It was, <laughs> it was a beautiful year of uh, you know getting up in the morning and what what's the card that's supposed to come forth today? And she worked with an artist, um, Diana Lancaster, who is a, a fantastic um, horse and kind of spiritual artist. That's um, she's she lives in the the hills of Arkansas and actually lives in a teepee half the year. So she's oh, cool. she's totally a cool woman. And um, so there's 52 cards. There is. Right? Mm-hmm. And um, so um, Diana did the, the, the artwork, artwork. And then I wrote the back side. And then Cammie them. wrote the back. So I think Cammie's picked one for us today. Yes, I have. Um, so it's called Dancing on the Edge. Shine the spotlight into the world before you. Dance on the edge and feel your inner strength as you step beyond a world of comfort. Break through to new realms, unknown realms and let the power of uncertainty unfold. For today is a day to break through the boundaries, real or imagined. Today is a day to dance in the new possibilities that unfold when you expand your horizons. Leaping with faith into this unknown, knowing that the landing might be a bit bumpy, but more importantly, knowing that you will find your footing and each step will become stronger. For this is about taking risk, a risk that will feed your body with invigoration, engaging the very being of your nerve endings, feeling the electricity of this energy and embrace it. Feed it with the grounding of the earth and know that it will move you into a bigger world with more possibilities. Take a chance on this day. Push the boundaries before you further. Live fully into your world as it expands. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, that just tunes right into what we've been talking about. Absolutely. (laughs) That's great. So I, I, you know, invite everybody to push their edge, dance on the edge. You know, really make that. You can't. You can't sit back and just let the world pass before you. Right. Find a way to get out onto your edge. That's that's right for you. And, and move into your possibilities. Absolutely. And um, what I love about these cards is um, the, the artwork is um, one of my favorites. It's a little bit more uh, cave painting oriented. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, um, and so I, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And the, the card that, that can be read is um, it's got reds and purples and greens and yellows. And it's really, I mean, you can see the boundary that the horse is actually pushing against. I don't know if that was intentional, but <laughs> it is, it is. And it was that day. And, you know, I, I got, I had Diana's artwork, um, before I wrote. So oh, nice. I, would, I would take the artwork and say, okay, what's this picture speak to me today? Oh, okay. And so that's how I, I, I worked through it. And I actually have the original painting of this card. Oh, nice. So I have it hanging in my office, which is a good reminder for me. Each day to push the edge. Definitely. So, Cammy, where can people go to find out more about what you do, how you can help them, maybe sign up for a workshop or retreat? Sure. Um, my website is www.syzygy, S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y-C-O.com. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and repeat that. It's, <laughs> it's S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y. Dash co dot com. Okay. Or my phone number is three zero three six seven zero seven two four four. Great. Well, Cami, is there anything else that you would like to share that you want people to know about today? I've got um, one equine vision journey um, left for the season. One public workshop. I do private workshops as well, but I have one um, public equine vision journey on September eighth and ninth and um, actually have one spot left in it. So oh, great. if there's anybody that's interested in it, uh, jump online onto my website, and you can sign up right on my website. Um, 
Okay. And what will they be doing in the vision? It's so it's an equine vision journey to your next chapter. Oh, okay. And it's um, it's it's two days of self discovery. You um, really tap into your strengths and your values and your passions, and um, define the essence of you. And the horses are on this journey with you. This you know over the whole two days. Um, we do. Um, Right round pin sessions where you get individual time with a horse and really get to do some deep reflection. We do um, um, shamanic journeys. We do medicine wheels. Um, so we tap into some some Native American um, ways of discovery. And um, and over the at, towards the end of the workshop, we're really setting some solid goals and paths of where you're going to take the work that that uncovers for you. Wonderful, wonderful, sounds great. Well, if she's only got one spot left, so if you're interested, go to her website and sign up. Well, Cami, thank you so much for being with us today. I really oh, appreciate you, it and sharing your journey and how you're helping others make their journey. It's really important.